Hello. I'm Alex Gardner from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and today I'm going to show you how to go and access uh, global glacier velocities that are part of the It's Live project. Uh, specifically, I'm going to show you how to create a publishable quality figure in under a minute. All right, so let's get started here. So first thing we'll do is we'll start the timer, and then we'll search for It's Live, It's underscore live. That will take us, first link here is our website, and if you scroll down, you'll see here that there's a link to Voila, which is just the rendering of a notebook, and that will bring up uh, the widget that allows you to access the data. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that we have a panel that we can navigate just by scrolling and panning. And so we'll zoom in here uh, to our favorite glacier, the Malaspina Glacier. And if I double click, I can lay down points on that glacier and I can zoom in and I can move those points and I can create a plot. So this is going and retrieving the data uh, from uh, the cloud and it creates a plot. And now I can save this plot and I can open that plot, and now I have a publishable quality figure, and the time it took me to get there was under a minute. All right, but there's more I want to show you here. That was just how quickly we could get to a publishable quality figure, but I can also zoom in. So let's say I'm really interested in this uh, peak that's around 2000, 2020, um, and the dates are kind of messed up, so I want to stretch that out a bit, and I can save that as well. Okay, so we now have uh, you know, some ability to interact with the plot, create those figures. Um, what's some of the other stuff I can do? I can export the data. So let's hit export button. I can download that data, save it to my downloads folder. And if I go look in my downloads folder, I'll have a, a zip file. And inside that zip file, I have three comma separated value uh, files uh, for each location. And if I open one of those with a text browser and take a look what's inside, I can see that for, for this location, uh, I have the date and time uh, uh, that the, the data was acquired. And then I also have the value of the velocities. And so I have the data that's sitting in the plot. Okay, so let's uh, show you some other things here. So um, to show that it's global, let's uh, clear these markers. Okay, and let's go now to the Antarctic. All right, so we'll zoom down to the Antarctic. Let's go check out uh, Pine Island Glacier and see what's going on there. Okay, so for Pine Island Glacier, again, I can click on some points on the glacier. I'm just double clicking and I could enter those down here if I wanted to. Uh, if I had specific points in mind, but in this case, I'm just kind of exploring the data. So I'm clicking and I can create a plot. So it's going and retrieving the data again, and it will generate a plot uh, of those um, three locations. And so you can see that uh, the, the orange point is in the middle. The blue point is right at the tongue or, or towards the end of the shelf and the green data is further up. And so those colors correspond to the markers here. And Let's say I wanted to export that data. Okay, and I have to download again. Perfect, so now I'd have those three points sitting in my download folder and I can look inside of those just to confirm and I have now these three points that are now in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, I can zoom in, so if I go to the plot, I can choose that box there and zoom in, see what's going on. I can clear those points clear those markers, and let's say I'm interested in just one point right here near the grounding line where the ice becomes a float. So I'm going to create a plot. And I can see that there's, um, you know, change in data distribution over time. One question I might have is, well, what sensors is that data coming from? And so if I come down here, I can go plot by satellite. And now instead of being colored by point, it's colored by satellite. And I can see that during the um, summer months or the months when there's, there's uh, light, uh, there's a clustering of Landsat 8 data, which makes sense because when it's polar night, uh, you can't um, derive velocities from optical imagery. And then you can see that there's a more continuous uh, collection of Sentinel-1 imagery and Sentinel-1 is a radar sensor. And so you can see it's, Continu continuity with time. Um, let's see, so I can also plot the error for that point. So I can look at the velocity error as a function of time. I can plot the component velocity. So here's the velocity in the x direction. 
here's the velocity in the y direction. And so I can also go just go back to the velocity. Um, now I'm going to um, look at one other thing here, which is um, when you derive glacier velocities or velocities from, from repeat imagery, uh, you need two images to derive the velocity. And all it's looking for is the displacement that's measured between the two images. And so you could imagine that in some cases, you can have a very long time separation between the two images that are acquired. You can actually measure the velocity that between two images that were acquired a year apart. Um, but you might not want that because if they're acquired a year apart, you won't see any of the seasonality that occurs. And so if you're interested in kind of the higher frequency events that are going on, you can actually play around with this slider here. And this is changing the time separation uh, between the two images that have been acquired. And so you can just look at that specific data as well. Um, and that's it. Um, oh, maybe I'll just mention one last thing, which is that it, it also works on a, on a phone or a tablet. You can see that it now scales and the, the plotting window moves around. And so if you're out in the field and you're curious about your glacier, you can bring it up on your phone if you have reception and, and take a look at the velocities. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you found this helpful.